Hey traders, Steve here from Jackrabbit Trader, and in this video I want to take a look at what I consider to be the ultimate trading strategy for the stock market. Last week we talked about what my trading process looks like, and this week I want to go a broad overview a little bit more in depth onto that process. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to look at in what I consider to be the ultimate trading process is we're looking for a strategy that has limited involvement during market hours, provides long-term growth, provides income replacement with smaller position sizes, enters and exits the stock market when we feel that conditions are in our favor, profits from up and down markets, right? Because if we're going to be doing this for any length of time, we're going to experience both up and down markets. Um, I know recently the market's been pretty much just going straight up, but it doesn't always happen that way. So we want to make sure that this process or whatever we formulate to be our trading process accounts for up and down markets and also one that raises cash and protects capital when we feel it's necessary. So we want to play offense when we need to play offense and we want to play defense when we need to play defense, all right? We're not just buying stocks constantly and consistently uh, and looking for the market to appreciate. So the first thing that I look at is where the market lives and what, what cycle the market's in. So you'll see here on my chart, this is a one year daily chart of the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. And in this chart, I've annotated areas where I consider the market to be uh, moving higher where we want to play offense and moving lower where we want to play defense. And we'll go over exactly how I do that in another video, um, but I also go over exact uh, procedures for each, each market cycle uh, in my free weekly trading process, which you can get uh, using the link in the description box below. But ultimately, anytime the market is below the 21 day, or the SPY I should say, is below the 21 day exponential moving average, we want to look at playing defense, right? And when it's above it, we want to play offense. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going, you know, 100, 100 miles an hour in both directions. It's kind of a, uh, a little bit of a, uh, you know, foot off the gas, a little, you know, a little caution. Um, and we're trans slowly transitioning into those uh, phases, I would, I would call them. But, uh, you know, again, I go over more of that in the weekly trading process uh, e-course. Um, but for purposes of this video, we're going to just look at the market phase that we're in currently. Okay. And that is a green phase being that the market is above the 21 day exponential moving average. And it's been above that 21 day since June 6th. All right. And this video is being recorded on July 28th. So basically almost two months of the market going straight up. Uh, this other white line is the eight-day moving average. That's kind of used as a uh, intermediate gauge, a short-term gauge. And, uh, you know, again, uh, we're not really going to touch on that in this video, but just understanding that when the market's above the 21-day, we're playing offense, and that's the phase that we're in. So the ultimate trading strategy that I have developed uh, and that works for me because I do work full-time, I have a life outside of... Um, YouTube and uh, the market and work. You know, my boys play hockey, uh, travel hockey, both boys. Um, so we're, we're pretty busy, you know, I mean, weekends and, and during the week, we're probably at the rink, you know, six, seven times a week. Um, and I really don't have time during the day to necessarily sit and watch and day trade or, um, uh, you know, potentially swing trade. Um, but I do pop in, you know, here and there and, you know, may take some money off the table. But what I'm really looking for is a strategy that doesn't have involvement during, during market hours. Um, and the strategy that I've developed is by trading the weekly chart. And the weekly chart is, in my opinion, one that kind of uh, gets rid of some of the noise in, in the daily chart. You know, a news event may move the markets. You know, uh, the president may come out with a tweet um, and, you know, move the market. So anything is possible every single day. Um, you know, any type of news event or anything like that can easily sway the markets. But I feel that the weekly chart kind of smooths that out and allows us to 
are really just concentrate on the support and resistance levels and really just concentrating on trading the weekly chart without getting shaken out too much. So I've developed the weekly chart, all my orders and, uh, you know, uh, exits entries are basically placed over the weekend. Um, and we'll go into the, more of that next week, a little bit more of an in-depth look right now. I just want to give you a broad overview of what I'm looking at. Um, cause honestly we could spend hours, um, and this video could be super long, uh, going over it, all the little nuances of, of this process. But, uh, for the most part, you know, it's a pretty simple trading strategy and, you know, we'll go through now what I look for in entries, what I look for in managing trades and what I look for in exits. And then, um, you know, again, probably wrap it up a little bit more next week on the exact process. Maybe I'll even show you uh, what I do every single weekend to go through my process and how we do it. So um, the first thing we want to look at is trade entry. And Raytheon is one that I'm looking at entering this week. Again, this video is being done July 28th. And what we see here in Raytheon is it had been making uh, lower highs. Okay, you can see that by this trend line. So lower high, and we'll just mark it up real quick. You know, here's a high. Here's a high. All right, then we we broke all the way down, rallied back strong. All right, and now what it's been doing is moving sideways. And I operate on the idea that stocks run and they rest, and they run and they rest. And I want to be looking at stocks when they're resting. Um, and looking for potential breakouts or pullbacks that can serve as my entry point in preparation or in the thought that the stock is going to start to run. All right. So when a stock then is going sideways as it is here, now we're looking at a setup. All right. And it's just a setup at this point. And the trigger in this situation is a breakout. So you can see that the highs right around 187, and we'll zoom in a little bit further so you can see this. All right, so the highs, we touched it once. I'll put a little arrow. We touched it once, we touched it twice. We tried to break out, but ultimately closed lower. And then finally, on the fourth touch, we broke out, okay? So in my opinion, this is a breakout trade, all right? And we'll get into a little bit more of the nuances in, in a minute. But this is a breakout trade that I'm looking to enter with my stop or the point that I think that the trade is wrong or I'm wrong in the trade being at the low of the consolidation. So again, stock move higher, sideways, all right, establish a resistance level at the top at 188 in this case and a support level at the bottom at 173. So I'm going to be taking an entry in Raytheon and I'm going to set my order again today being Sunday. It'll fill tomorrow morning, uh, Monday at the market at the open. And my stop on that trade is going to be anything below a close below basically 173. I'll be out of the trade. All right. So that's option number one. That's that's a breakout trade. The next idea, and this is a trade that I took uh, back a few weeks ago, is a pullback trade. And this was in Facebook. And what we're looking at here is a stock that had been running higher. Okay. And you can see if we want to annotate this chart, you can see that there is a breakout here. Okay. Here was some sideways consolidation, a breakout. I missed that one. Full disclosure. And then we came up and then we pulled back. Okay. And now what I'm looking at in, in a pullback trade is the stock is now making consecutive weekly, uh, well, the highs are consecutively lower on the weekly. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five consecutive weekly closes where it never passed the high from the previous bar. Okay, and then sure enough, here it did right here. Okay, so you had one, two, three, four, five, and then finally enough exhaustion to the downside where we started to move higher. All right, this is the entry point on a pullback trade. And a pullback trade, in my opinion, is not necessarily just any type of pullback. You can see that this pullback actually came back down to 161, which matched the lows from this consolidation. So it has some kind of structure, has some kind of support to it, where I can say, you know, 
this isn't just an arbitrary uh, low. It, it matches up with a support level. And now the confirmation is a close above the previous week's high after it hadn't done so in five or six weeks. All right, so those are the two types of trades that I look for. And again, just to go over it, we wanna operate on the idea that we're running and we're resting. We wanna be in uh, stocks that are trending higher. Okay, we, we talked about that in both situations. All right, the stocks are moving higher in both cases. Uh, looking for that consolidation. Okay, so the consolidation on the breakout in RTN, right? And then waiting for a breakout or pullback confirmation. So the breakout here in RTN as we highlighted and the pullback confirmation, which is the move above the previous week's high in Facebook. All right, so those are the two types of entries that I look for. That's it, all right? I, I'm pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I'm not really looking for anything um, out of the ordinary. That you can see there's no indicators on my charts. It's just simple support, resistance, and price, all right? And that's how I operate. Uh, I don't try and read too much into it. Um, we're not really looking at you know RSI or anything like that. Too complicated for me, all right? I just wanna concentrate on everything on the chart, keep it super simple, and move on. So the next part that I wanna talk about is trade management. And trade management, in my opinion, is, you know, how do I manage the risk while I'm in the position, okay? So we wanna identify potential resistance areas as potential tar targets. We're watching for new consolidations, all right? The trail stops. We're gonna add some positions on breakouts and we're gonna enter hedges or raise cash on market downturns. And we'll go back to that SPY chart to kind of give you an idea on what we're looking for there. So this, in my opinion, is the most important part of any trade, all right? The entries are easy, okay? The entries I give you free. If you wanna head over to jackrabbittrader.com, I do free trade alerts every Sunday. Again, link in the description box below, but I'll send those out. Facebook was one of them, RTN was one of them. Basically, everything that I look at on the weekends, as far as entries, you'll get, okay? Um, in my opinion, trade management is the hard part. So let's go back to the setup I'm looking at in Raytheon. And the first thing we want to talk about are potential resistance areas. So this was a trade that was trending lower over the last uh, you know six months or so, since really the beginning of 2019, it's been trending higher, uh, consolidating. And now we want to look at areas, resistance areas that potentially we can use as a reference for our trade. So if we're looking at trading this stock, all right, obviously there's gonna be some points along the way where, you know, from the chart, we can say, you know what, it's probably better to be taking some money off the table in these areas than adding to a position or putting more money at risk, all right? And to do that, we kind of highlighted them already, and this is what I, why I love the weekly chart, because to me it seems so uh, clear as compared to if we switch over to a daily chart, all right, it starts to get a little bit more jumbled and uh, you know, a lot more um, smaller levels of resistance that really at the end of the day aren't necessarily important. I shouldn't say not important, but not as strong as weekly resistance levels. All right, so that's one of the reasons, again, I love the weekly chart. But we kind of talked about these two points, these two lower highs, um, which are highlighted in this, in this uh, white circle. All right, so in my opinion, if we start to, let's just take these off so it's a little easier to see, but these represent resistance levels, okay? You can see that the, the stock here bounced off that level, then it consolidated right above it, broke below it, tried to get back above it. All right, so this 207 level, in my opinion, is pretty important. So taking this trade here, Raytheon trading about 190, all right, if we can get up to 207, we're gonna look, maybe take some profits there, all right? And the way I usually structure this is I take half my position off at that first resistance level and I, then we would look for another resistance level, okay? And, you know, here we go, right here at the, the highs, 228. If we can get back to 228, I'll gladly take my other half off. So uh, a trade that necessarily would run for $40, um, you know, with a, with a pretty tight stop of only, what are we talking? We're talking about 15 bucks. All right, we're talking about making almost three times what we're risking, in my opinion, is a great trade. And, you know, that's what 
we're, we're looking for in these potential resistance areas is that we want to be uh, active in taking some money off the table because ultimately we're making, we're trading to make money, right? Um, you know, we have other options that we talked about in last, in the first video about, you know, index investing, dividend investing that are really there to just build wealth, right? They're there to just continually um, make money. You stay invested forever, basically, all right? You're not looking to trade around any positions. You're looking to use that to build wealth and just stay long the market at all times. In this situation, active trading, completely different, all right? We're trading to make money. We're trading to supplement income. We're trading, uh, you know, for a reason, not just to basically put a hundred dollar or two hundred dollar deposit every week into an account. All right. So in this situation, Raytheon is a vehicle. That's all it is. You, you don't fall in love with it. You're not marrying it. It's a vehicle to make money. And in this situation, this trade right here, I would be looking at taking half my position off at 207, which is a potential resistance area, a potential target and 228. All right. And that's how I would move forward with that. So that's, one way of managing trades. The other way of managing trades is watching for new um, consolidations to trail stops. All right, and one of the trades that I'm in right now is DRI, uh, which is Darden Restaurants. And I'll actually turn on my trades so you can see them. All right, actually, you know what? Let's keep them off for a minute. We'll turn back on in one second. So this is a trade that I entered uh, again, we had this small little pullback, a consolidation for four or five weeks, a breakout, and then really it didn't do much after that, right? So my first stop was at 107, which is the low of this consolidation, all right? Looking for an area or a potential, uh, you know, move back to the 120s. At that point, I didn't take profits off of that because it wasn't a big enough move to justify the entry. So the other way of managing a trade is trailing stops and looking for areas to trail stops to. So Darden broke out and we'll zoom in a little bit. So Darden broke out and then really spent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 10, 11, 12, 13 weeks, just moving sideways. So this is where a little patience comes into play. All right. I didn't pull back, didn't break down. All right. But just moved sideways and then broke out again. So in this situation, a way to manage a trade for me is to now trail a stop. Okay, so the stop originally was 107 with a breakout at 117. Now stock moved sideways, broke out again at 123. And now instead of keeping my stop all the way down here, I say, well, you know what? There's a new point of reference for me that the stock shouldn't fall below. Okay, if, if it's a strong stock and it wants to continue to move higher, should not fall below those levels. And that's here at 116. Okay, and you can see that in the uh, where the stock basically has pulled back and bounced every single time is a new area of support and that new area of support now lends itself to trailing stops. So by doing that, I'm able to take some risk off the table in a way that we're not necessarily allowing the stock to go all the way back to 107. The stop is now 116. But in situations where the market is trending higher, as we talked about in this chart, right, the market's been trending higher since 6.6. Now we want to look to potentially add to that position. Okay. And this is where I want to turn the, the uh, my trades back on. So again, you can see I bought 47 shares here at 117.66. Because again, remember, waiting for the weekly close and I'm buying it at the following week's open. All right. So that's why these buy points are offset uh, by one week. And again, here bought another 12 shares. So why did I buy 12 shares? Well, ultimately, we talk about a new breakout, all right? We know that the market is trending higher, so we wanna be in adding risk. We're in a playing offense type of phase. And what we do is we then use this stop and a new breakout as the points of reference to calculate your position size, okay? So before where I was using 117 with a stop of 107, I had 10, basically $10 in risk. Now I'm using a 125 with a stop of 116, so $9 in risk. All right, so my risk size went down. So ultimately, by process of math, my position size goes up. And we'll go over that a little bit more in next week's video on uh, on how I enter and exit trades. 
But I just want you to understand, there's a whole process, there's a whole system that I use and that I've developed that allows me to do this. And it didn't happen overnight. All right, I can, I'll be completely honest with you, it took years. All right, and um, I think just by having YouTube now and, and having all this information at hand, there's a lot of information out there that sounds great. You know, you wanna trade huge size and you wanna make millions of dollars overnight. Um, I, I, with a family, I can't justify that risk. And I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, potentially have the same situation. And I wanna present an alternative way where you can consistently make money by managing risk and being very methodical in how you navigate the market. So uh, that's the whole point of this. And again, you know, this is the way I do it. Um, and I'm presenting it to you just as a starting point. You know, you can use it, you can follow me, you can do whatever you want with it, but there's ways to make money in the markets without being uh, you know, ball to the wall, super risky uh, type of person. So in this Darden example, all right, we talk, see here how you can trail stops to manage risk and you can also add to a position. Now, if the market was in a downturn where it was in a red phase where you know the market is now moving lower i wouldn't have added to this position i would have just trailed stops and left it alone okay that would have been the way i managed that risk because i'm not the market is not telling me we're in an ad risk or we're playing an offensive type of game in that situation so again not just going out doing everything the same way every time adapting to the market con conditions all right if we're in a red phase, I want to just manage risk, take risk off the table, and not put more put myself into you know a bigger position. All right, because ultimately, when you do this, when you add to a position, you're not adding more risk to your position. It's not that it's that my my risks per share went down, my position size goes up. I'm not adding more risk necessarily. I'm still risking the same half a percent or whatever it is of my portfolio. But when the market is not in the condition to do that. I just want to take that and trail that stop up and not add the risk, if that makes sense. And if not, leave a comment in the description or leave a comment below and uh, I'll answer, you know, or shoot me an email. But hope that makes sense. Again, it's explained a little bit maybe more clear in the uh, weekly trading process. And the last thing that we want to talk about is kind of what I just, you know, touched on is we want to enter hedges or raise cash on that market downturn. So again, when, when the market is saying, hey, we're below the 21 day exponential moving average, we're in a defensive kind of mindset. You know, how are we going to manage that? Well, first, we're going to trail stops up like we just talked about in Darden. We're not going to add to positions. All right. We're going to necessarily, we're going to take some of our high, you know, big winners off the table. You know, sometimes you get something like a Starbucks. Yeah, something, you know, uh, oops, I'm in the wrong chart, uh, in Starbucks where, um, you know, again, you, you just want to take some, some profits off the table and, you know, you're just going to do it and you're going to do it at any opportune times. But the whole point of this whole situation is, or, or, or trading is that you want to make money, um, in the market and ultimately you're looking to just take profits off the table. So you can see here in Starbucks that, you know, I had a couple entries, I had an exit, um, and then we got into it again, and we traded up to 40 or to 89. And then right before earnings, I said, you know what, this thing's moved pretty far. I'm not a gambling man. I'm going to take the rest of my position off and, you know, move forward. And sure enough, earnings came out and you could see here that Starbucks was up uh, you know, $8 the next day. Um, but that's the name of the game, right? At the end of the day, I probably took six, $700 out of the, out of the trade. That's some good money to me. All right. It's money that I can use, um, and, you know, live my life with the, you're never going to get them perfect. So, you know, we want to raise cash when the, the opportunity arises. We want to also understand when we're in a downturn and we would, you know, in this situation, and I'll talk, you know, again, talk about it more at some point in the future, not for this video, but just understanding that there's times to raise cash, there's time to hedge the portfolio. Um, and, you know, doing so allows you to, to profit from those market downturns, right? We talked about on the, in the beginning, we want a system that, or a process that allows us to, to not only profit when the market's going higher, but going lower. And when we hedge with SPY puts against the portfolio, uh, if you look back in my May, um, you know, trade recaps, 
uh, I was basically made most of my money in May when the market was moving lower, right, right in here. I made that money from SPY puts, all right? And I had, I think my best month ever, it was like, it was like a $5,500 month, all right? And the market was going lower, all right? So that's just the importance of how you can use puts and, you know, hedge and still make money. So the last thing I want to talk about is the exit, all right? And, you know, we kind of touched on this, so I'll go through this pretty quickly. But ultimately, you want to hedge, uh, I'm sorry, you want to exit trades to make the money, all right? At some point, you want to make the money. And, you know, there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, so going back to the Raytheon trade that we talked about, once I enter this trade, I will set a good sell cancel order to sell half of my position at this target around 207. All right, that's one way to do it. And if you look at some previous trades, um, you know, you, they're going to hit those hit those resistance levels and they're going to continue through them. All right, so Twitter is one trade that I had. Again, this was a, a somewhat of a pullback trade right to an important support level. Broke higher. My first exit was right around 40 bucks. You can see here, I sold half my position at $40.50. All right, my next target now is 46.85. So right around 46.10, I'm selling my other half a position. And you can see that right here. I'm long 95 shares. I'm gonna sell the other 95 at that target. All right, so you, yes. There, that's how you manage it. Could Twitter continue to go and be 52, 53? Absolutely. Maybe does it give us another point to get into it at that point? Absolutely. But for right now, the trade that I made on this pullback was a move back to $40.80 $40 and then ultimately a move to $46.85. All right. Then you have trades like Facebook uh, that, you know, sometimes you just want to say, hey, you know what? It made it far enough. I'm going to take it off. All right. And that's kind of what happened here on Facebook. It moved all the way up to 208, started moving lower. And I said, you know what? It's time. We're going to take some money off because I was up a lot. Okay. So again, you want to take them off at targets. You want to take them off if you have an open PL that's substantial, similar to Costco. All right. Costco has been on a run. I took some profits here at basically 280. Any reason? No. The reason was I had an open PL of like $800 on that trade. It would be stupid for me to give that back. All right. So I want to take half the position off. My risk is all the way down here at 238. I'm not going to let it get there. I'm putting a stop in right below the previous week's low and going to, um, you know, when we break below a previous candle. Okay. So that's the way I look at managing risk. And then ultimately, there's the worst way is when it breaks below a support level, okay? And sometimes trades just don't work. And this was a trade I just exited in EA. You could see uh, similar to that Twitter trade, it was in a downtrend, broke above it. I said, okay, well, let's see if we can get back to these uh, resistance levels or potential targets. Sure enough, reverse quickly and ultimately broke below my uh, initial support level. So, you know, again, not, they, all don't, they all don't work. And this is how I just continue to manage risk. Took a big loss in this. Uh, I think this was like a six or seven hundred dollar loss. But again, when you're starting to take four or five, six hundred dollars out of the market, um, they they kind of they don't matter anymore. And you know, here's my open positions, and you can see I have four hundred dollars in Costco, four hundred thirteen in Disney. 400 in uh, Darden, three, 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 two. All right, so those add up, all right? And here are my losses, all right? Not too bad. So I'll take like $300 or $400 in losses for about two or $3,000 in profits, all right? And that's just how I trade. And again, there's no right or wrong way. It's the way I do it. We'll go a little bit more into it next week in, uh, in our next video, but I just wanted you to see you know, this is, this is how I manage a portfolio. This is my process and I do it every single weekend here at Jackrabbit Trader. Have a good week. Take care.